Fairies and Changelings by Will Waters. There are many weird whispers afoot in this world, several strange stories to scare silly sallies, at least 50 frightening figures fomenting fear in fretful children. But of all this ghoulishness and ghastly garishness, the most grotesque is singular in its evil intent, for this tale is not meant for children. This tale is not a mere ghost story. Rather, this tale was diabolically designed to unseat children from their natural home in their mother's hearts. This tale dementedly destroys a child's safe haven in his father's house. I warn you, stop up your ears, do not listen, for I must tell this tale, but you should not hear it. This tale is taught to all fairy folk, and it is their greatest weapon against us. Endless eons ago, before the earliest histories of the human race, your forebears fought a great battle against the former inhabitants of this earth. Those billions of sprites who had been cast out of Olympus for their rebellions against their betters had become so open they could no longer be overlooked or ignored. These outcasts we fought, and we won, and they left. They slunk away into small places with the bats and moles, disappearing out of our sight. And in time, we forgot. But they did not forget. No, they did not forget. While we rejoiced and celebrated and went on with our lives, they plotted and schemed and hatched an insidious plan to infect us, to destroy us by degrees, to invade so silently and secretly and slowly, for they are so patient. Time is meaningless to them. They crafted an intrigue so subtle we would succumb, never suspecting our enemy until we were slain. For how can you suspect something that you shall not be seen? What was their ploy, you ask? I will tell you if I am not prevented by my pathos. It may have occurred to you, if you have ever thought long upon the subject, that one who is not corporeal might, with more liberality than you or I, choose his own appearance. And if you have thus supposed, you would be correct. So the cabal of our enemies conspired anciently, and to this very day you have heard the tales. They watch, and when some unsuspecting grown-up momentarily steps away from their child, leaving the babe unattended, the fairy strikes, abducting the brat, replacing it with the changeling, one of our own, now in your home, part of your family, an ancient evil with the aspect of your own child, cared for and protected by you until it reaches its maturity and you unknowingly set it free upon an unsuspecting society. And what happens to the younglings they steal? These are enrolled in the fairy school where they are indoctrinated and brainwashed, becoming hobgoblins, set loose once their re-education is complete to find their way back into human society where they take every opportunity to tear down your traditions and take apart your treasured institutions. So, I've done it. I've told you the terrible truth, but how will you know? How can you tell if you have a changeling in your midst? Does your baby look funny? Does it have unusual features or birthmarks? This could be a sign you are fostering a fairy. Is your child afraid of iron? A changeling might have replaced your loved one. Leave iron shears open in her bed and she might leave you alone. Is your little one left-handed? Lupin. Have you had a sudden string of bad luck? Puck. Does your kid cry all the time? Fawn. Don't believe it? Go listen to the baby goats at farm country next spring. Is your whelp too wise? Spy on it. If you overhear him speaking of things he should not know, you might be harboring a hob. Cage it up until its compatriots bring back your, your bairn to you. Does your moppet avoid other humans? Spill some seeds. This breed of fair folk cannot resist coming out to count them. Is your rug rat eating you out of house and home? Changelings have ravenous appetites. Put some eggshells in their food to expose them. If they think it's funny, you can assume they are fairies. And finally,